Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I trust that you are lifting up one another in prayer. And I'll remind you about the power of when the body blesses the body. Amen. Please be connecting with one another. We're trying to help out uh, with the church things. And we've got some of our leaders that are uh, reaching out and, and working, trying to create connection. Uh, and we will do our best. But please don't just rely on us to set something up for you. Amen. Let's reach out. Let's connect to one another. And uh, let's, uh, let's help each other. Amen. It's a powerful thing to be a part of the church of the living God. Amen. What a marvelous gift it is to be a part of the church. I love, I love the church. Amen. And everything that there is to do with it. Nobody ever claimed the church was perfect because it's made up of people. And as long as it's made up of people, it's not going to be perfect because I'm a part of it and I'm not perfect. But I love the church. Amen. There is nothing in this world that I would rather be a part of than the church of the living God. And so we are just excited, amen, to be able to worship together. I'm going to give you another disclaimer. I've said this a couple of times, but if you are, amen, part of another United Pentecostal church, and I am not your pastor, uh, we're, we welcome you uh, during this time, and uh, we're, we're glad that you're with us. Uh, but please uh, prioritize your own live stream. If you, if you have service right now at your local church, you should disconnect from us and go watch yours. Amen. Also, uh, run it by your pastor. Let him know that you're watching our services. Give him the, the opportunity to, to give some input on that. And if I say anything at all, at all, that is contradictory to what your shepherd, amen, preaches and teaches, amen, I, I am sorry. Forgive me. Amen. You listen to them and uh, everything will work out just great. Amen. I, I, I'll also make one more comment. We want you to engage in the services. I, I've gone back and watched some of these, and I'm thankful, amen, about the engagement that is taking place, the people that are communicating, and the amens, and the hallelujahs, and that's good, and all that. I, I really want you to keep doing that. And uh, in, any other side conversations can wait till after service, amen, just like they would if you were here. Amen. Once the service is over, you can have all kinds of side conversations. Amen. But let's stay focused on uh, the word tonight. Amen. Go with me, if you would, please, to Psalm the 62, the 62nd Psalm. And I just want to read two verses of Scripture, and, uh, and then we're going to jump into what the word of the Lord has for us. Amen. Tonight. I'm excited about what God has for us tonight. Amen. The 62nd Psalm, verses 5 and 6. Amen. If you're there, say, I am there. Amen. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Oh, come on, somebody say, praise the Lord. I shall not uh, uh, be moved. Amen. Amen. David is a leader. David is a leader. More specifically, he is a leader of God's people. He's not just a good leader. He's not just a powerful man. He's a chosen leader. And he's a leader of God's people. And even more specifically, uh, many of his words uh, 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 come to us in Holy Scripture. It means they were anointed and purposed by God. That they were, they were breathed and designed by God. So it's not an accident that we have this text in our Bible still today. Amen. It's not just something that was a part of David's life, but it's for us right now. Somebody say, it's for me. Amen. It's for me. And so it's in the Word for us. And I, I want to talk about that a little bit because I believe I'm talking to some spiritual leaders. I believe I'm talking to some people, amen, who are leaders in your life. You may not uh, want to accept it or you may not feel that way, but you're an apostolic saint of God uh, and people are looking at you and people are listening to you and they're watching, how, amen, how you respond and what you say and what you do. Uh, and so I, I, I want us to, to look, up, uh, look at this a little bit and learn some things um, from what David uh, shows us in just these couple short passages of Scripture. Notice um, that this scripture is obviously for more than just himself that David is talking here and there is probably other people involved but David speaks as if he's talking to himself 
Now, I have to ask you tonight, does anybody ever talk to yourself? Has anybody did, did you ever just sit around talking, talking to yourself? Have you ever uh, found yourself uh, ask, asking and answering questions? Have you, ever, have you ever had somebody walk into the room and say, uh, who, who are you talking to? Uh, and and I, and that's uh, that's something that happens in in life. Uh, but you know, I I saw that that studies studies show that uh, that talking to yourself can be a very normal uh, behavior, even a behavior that can be very uh, good for you. It can actually be a a good thing to do if everybody say if if you have the right conversations. Oh, hallelujah, amen. Even your conversations with yourself matter. Oh, I wish somebody would hear me now. Even the conversations you have with yourself matter. It's not just what other people are saying to you. It's not just what other people are speaking into your life, uh, whether it be positive, negative, good or bad. It's also the conversations you're having with yourself. Amen. And so, amen, as long as they're good conversations, this can be a perfectly good and healthy uh, part of our life. And David is making a declaration, whether it's to himself or whoever else is around. I don't know, but he says it like this. My soul, wait thou only upon God. So he speaks and he says, my soul. He's talking to himself. He says, my soul, wait thou only. Somebody say only. Amen. Wait thou only upon God. Amen. Wait upon the Lord. Don't wait for the next negative. Don't wait for the next life explosion or implosion. Don't convince yourself there's another tragic thing on the horizon. Wait upon God only. Somebody shout only. Amen. I think it's a very interesting thing that David, amen, uh, this, this, this emphatic word is used here. That he doesn't just say, uh, my soul wait thou upon God. He says, my soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. He is my rock and my salvation. No, he only is my rock and my salvation. He's not just another choice. Uh, he's not just another option. He's just not something else uh, that I might turn to when everything else falls apart. But he only is. He only is. We gotta wait upon God only. We gotta, we gotta make God our only option. We make Him our only option and we'll be alright. If we make Him uh, uh, our only uh, hope for tomorrow, uh, everything is gonna be alright. David says, my expectation is from Him. My expectation. There are some things that you can just expect. There are always Things that happen, the, these expectations are true for everybody. No exceptions. You can just expect it. The devil is a liar. Expect it. You don't ever have to wonder if that's true. You don't ever have to wonder if the, if the devil is trying to do good for you. You don't ever have to wonder if the devil is trying to help you, if he's trying to speak positivity and truth into your life. No, the devil is a liar. Expect it. Amen. Guess what else you can expect? Life gets rough. Life gets rough. You can expect it. Storms are going to come. You can expect it. You say, well, it's a nice evening. It's sunny. Everything looks nice right now. Yeah, that's good. You can expect there to be sunshine, but you can also expect there to be rain. These things are going to happen. Life gets rough. Let me tell you another one, and I'm not trying to hurt anybody, but people let each other down. Oh, hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Maybe don't look at the person sitting next to you in the house right now. But people let each other down. Expect it. Don't live with your head in the sand. Expect it. Now you say, well, why, why would I ever live that way? That sounds like a bad way to live. Now hear me. Let me clarify. Expect it not to point out the negatives, but to separate the most important positive. And that is Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. 
Jesus doesn't change. Jesus is forever the same. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And the sooner that that becomes truth and not just a cliche, the better off you're going to be. The sooner that becomes a reality, amen, and your expectation and not just some cute phrase, the better off you're going to be because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it doesn't matter what anybody says about it. And it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about it. And it doesn't want matter what comes into your life tomorrow Jesus will be the same oh clap your hands onto the Lord somebody oh hallelujah amen amen he was strength before he is strength now he was provision before he is provision now he was help in the past he is help in the present he was a friend hallelujah he is a friend i don't care what's going on i know some people got some bad news this week i know the economy's in turmoil i know there's things uh, topsy-turvy turned upside down i understand that is the reality of our human situation but God is not turned upside down God is the same yesterday today and forever the same oh hallelujah oh hallelujah somebody said praise the Lord oh my God you know I, I have I have some great friends in my life I have some great friends in my life I have I have wonderful family members in my life but I have had friends that have abandoned me I've had friends that have turned their back on me. I've had family members who left the faith. I don't, I don't cut myself off from people because that they may let me down. No. I, I remember how many times I've let other people down. Amen. I remember how many times I've let other people down. And so, and so uh, sometimes people are going to let you down. Now, that, there's a difference between, let me just pastor for a second here. There's a difference between somebody letting you down and somebody hurting you. Somebody abusing you. Somebody taking advantage of you. There's nothing nowhere that says that you're supposed to just allow them to keep doing that in your life. But people will uh, mess up from time to time. And they, they will not follow through from time to time. And, and so uh, I, I understand that I have done that to others and others have done it to me. But, but I believe uh, that, that I, I, I will, uh, life is better when it's connected with other people. I believe that life is better uh, when, when experienced with others. And so, so I will continue to make connections uh, with people because the risks uh, are, in my opinion, uh, the risks are worth the rewards uh, when it comes to people. But I got to tell somebody that's listening to me tonight, there are no risks uh, with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I said there are no risks with Jesus. Amen. He is always faithful. He is always true. He is always merciful. He is always holy. He is always loving. Oh, hallelujah. There are no risks with him. He is never going to set you up for a fall. He is never going to knock you down. He is never going to mock nor ridicule. And he is never, amen, going to fail to come through. There are no risks with Jesus oh hallelujah man I find comfort in that today there are no risks somebody say no risk amen so give somebody a high five tell them there's no risk with Jesus there's no risk with Jesus there's no there's no risk with Jesus oh hallelujah do you know what it means to be omnipresent he's an omnipresent God he's an everywhere God Jeremiah 23, 24 says this, Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. The psalmist says this in the 139th Psalm, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike. 
to thee. This is what I'm talking about. This is an I'm not present God. This is an everywhere type God. This is an all time type God. Job said it like this in 34 and 21. For his eyes are upon the ways of man and he seeth all his goings. Mm, hallelujah. He seeth all his goings. And I'm sorry if I say, if sharing those scriptures makes you kind of uh, crunch down a little bit in your chair and hide your face and pull the holy, uh, hoodie up over your head and, and, and you want to hide because you, it scares you. That shouldn't scare you. Oh, hallelujah. That ought to that ought to encourage you. That ought to make you feel good. Amen. And I'm not present. God means uh, that he is an everywhere God uh, and it means that he can't leave you and you can't leave him. Oh, hallelujah. I said he can't leave you uh, and you can't leave him. I don't matter how far you run. Uh, amen. You're going to run into God. Uh, it doesn't matter how far you, where you hide. Uh, he's going to be there with you. You can choose to not love him. You can choose to not serve him. You can choose to ignore him. Uh, but nobody is getting away from anybody. Hallelujah. Because he's an omnipresent God. Hallelujah. And I find great comfort in that. Uh, I find great comfort in that because that means that this is true from Isaiah 43 and 2 when thou passest through the waters I will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee and when thou walkest through the fire thou shalt not be burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee hallelujah when you pass through the waters God says I'm going to be with you when you pass through the rivers God says I'm going to be with you when you pass through the fire God said by the way these are all things that actually happened in scripture to believers and people of God so yeah they had a tough day yeah they ran into some obstacles yeah things got a little difficult for a little bit but they had an omnipresent God that never leaves us nor forsakes us who was right there to be the answer in their situation oh clap your hands and magnify the Lord with me oh hallelujah my God we worship you Jesus Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I, I don't live waiting for the next tragedy or the next bad day. I know it's part of life, but I also know God will be with me. I know God will be with me. I know I'm in good hands. Oh, hallelujah. I know I'm in good hands. All state insurance, right? You're in good hands. You're in good hands with all state. You know, I, I did a, I thought about that today and, and I did a little 10 second Google search about all state insurance and I, I found a frequently asked questions page and, and on the frequently asked questions, one of the questions was entitled, what does all state insurance not cover? And I hate to tell you, but there was a pretty long list of things under there <laughs> that all, that all state insurance doesn't cover. Now, now you could pay a little extra money for this, a little bit more for that, and a little bit more for that, and maybe eventually, amen, you could get everything covered, uh, amen. Uh, but their, their logo is the, the two hands cut together, right? The Allstate logo. I, mean, I, I might not be able to legally even say this online. I don't know. I didn't think that all the way through, amen. I don't want to get sued by Allstate. Thank God for inch companies, amen. But their, their logos are hands cut together. You know what it makes me think of uh, when I see those hands cut together? It makes me think of that song I learned as a little kid. He's got the whole world in his hands. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not against insurance. I have insurance. But my expectation, David said it, my expectation is in the Lord. He is my confidence. His hands are what's holding me. It don't matter what anything else happens. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. It doesn't matter what hand comes against me. It doesn't matter what fist is formed against me. I'm already in his hands. And you can't take me out of his hands. Man can't take me out of God's hands. The devil can't take me out of God's hands. Nothing, hallelujah, shall separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus, my Lord, hallelujah, I'm in good hands. I've come to remind somebody tonight, you're in good hands with Jesus. Oh, clap your hands. Clap those hands unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Good hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Oh, hallelujah. 
He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. Amen. He's got the whole world in his hands. Now, that ought to give you some confidence tonight. That ought to make you feel, amen, just ecstatic to be a child of the king. You remember the gate beautiful? You know the story. Peter and John came upon them lame man. The Bible says he's laid daily at the gate. He had an expectation. It was the whole reason why he was there. He knew that there were going to be people there, not just people, but people that were on their way to, to prayers and on their way to church. And so hopefully they were, they were concerned people, caring people. And so he was laid there every day to beg alms. That was the expectation. He expected alms. Alms represented his daily life. They represented his routine. Oh, Hallelujah. Asking of alms represented his daily routine, but Peter introduced him, hallelujah, to the name of Jesus, and his expectations changed. Oh, hallelujah. When Peter's response to him cha changed, uh, alms, uh, I'm asking alms, uh, I, I, does anybody have any alms? Uh, can you give a little spare, a little something, uh, amen, for me? Uh, I had to get carried here. Uh, I can't get here on my own. Uh, I get laid here at the gate. Uh, I'm going to be here in the sun all day. Uh, somebody's going to have to come bring me home tonight. You got any alms? Uh, you got any alms? Uh, that was his expectation. But when Peter says silver and gold, have I none? But such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. When Peter's response to him changed, all of a sudden the man's expectations changed. Oh, hallelujah. His expectations change. You expect bad news tomorrow. You expect to continue being sick. You expect the trial to go on. Guess what? Jesus can change your expectation. I said Jesus can change your expectation. I know you're used to feeling a certain way. I know you're used to thinking a certain way. Oh, hallelujah. But we've got a God uh, who's got a different answer to your problem. We've got a God uh, who's got a different answer, amen, to your situation. And since he We've got a different answer, and his name is Jesus. Then you can have a different expectation of what the outcome is going to be because when Jesus gets involved, he can change the outcome completely. Oh, hallelujah. I got to tell somebody, hear me, hear this preacher tonight. I got to tell somebody, the gate beautiful has been nothing but ugly for you. It's time to get out of there. I said, the gate beautiful has been nothing but ugly. It's time to get out of here. Why don't we find a new normal? Why don't we find a new way of living this life? Uh, one that includes the Lord as our expectation. Oh, hallelujah. It includes the Lord as our expectation. Psalm 62 and 6. He only. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say only. Amen. Somebody shout only. He only is my rock and my salvation. Only Jesus can be a solid foundation. Why are we looking anywhere else? Why would we look anywhere else? Why would we believe that he only is salvation, hear me now, and not believe that he only is our rock? Oh, I need somebody to hear what I'm saying tonight. Amen. You, you can get to a place, uh, 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 where, where a misconception of how it works, uh, where you begin to think, uh, yeah, I, I understand my salvation. He, he's the God of my salvation, and my salvation is secure in him, and he's the one who saves me and all of that. But you can forget that he's not just your salvation, but he's also your rock. Oh, hallelujah. You say, well, yeah, I, I remember when I was baptized, and I remember when I was filled with the Holy Ghost, and I remember when I began to live a holy life, holy, acceptable unto God, and I, I remember, amen, how he helped me, and he's keeping me, and, and I know that as far as my salvation is concerned, uh, but don't, don't separate that uh, from also him being your rock, uh, your daily foundation, your daily stronghold, uh, amen, the thing that we rely on, uh, that we hold to. Psalm 62 and 2 is actually the first of two times in five verses that says the same thing. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. I shall not be moved. You see, David, in these five verses, he says the same, the same verse almost identically twice. David's using the old repetition uh, trick. 
Amen. He's encouraging himself in the Lord, which is another thing we learned by, from David. He's encouraging himself in the Lord. And one of the ways that he is encouraging himself in the Lord is by using repetition. A repetition to establish it in his heart and in his mind. A repetition to remind himself. He's talking to himself again. Hallelujah. There goes David talking to himself again. I wish some apostolics, uh, amen, would get to talking to themselves. Uh, I wish some child of the king would get to talking to themselves. Uh, I wish some people, amen, would get to talking to themselves. Uh, the Lord only is my salvation the Lord only is my rock I shall not be moved he says it once and then he says it again I wish you'd start talking to yourself and repeating that I shall not be moved I shall not be removed I shall not be moved like a tree planted by the water hallelujah I shall not be moved because God only is my salvation and he only is my rock and I shall not be moved the rock represents the defense and the strength to not be moved. We can't forget that our salvation is also a rock. The God of our salvation is also a rock. The God of our salvation is also our foundation. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shall praise the Lord. It's also our foundation. The same God that saves us, keeps us. The same God that forgives us empowers us. The same God that washes our sins away shields us from future attacks. Oh, hallelujah. You just, you just, I just, I need you to know this. The same God that washes our sins away. Oh, hallelujah. We got a baptismal tank right here. Hey, man, we just baptized, hey, man, Stephen the other day. God bless you, Stephen. We love you, buddy. Hey, man, church is excited to meet you. We just baptized Stephen the other day. Hey, man, hey, man, this is our baptismal tank. This is our watery grave of baptism, if you will. Hey, man, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Hey, man, you can have your sins washed away when you go down in the grave, the watery grave. Hey, man, of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to reach out, hey, man, to the church this week and... Man, Email us, uh, reach out on Facebook, whatever. We would love to talk with you about baptism. Amen. But I need you to understand, church, I need you to hear me now. The same God that cares about us enough and loves us enough to wash our sins away in baptism. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Is the same God that's going to keep us the day after. It's the same God that's going to protect us the week after. It's the same God that's going to come through for us. Hallelujah. It's going to come through for us when the fiery tarts of the enemy come our way. And when the lies, deceptions, and manipulations start coming our way. We've got a God in heaven. Hallelujah. We've got a God in heaven who is not only our salvation, but our salvation is our foundation. I shall not be moved. I shall. Oh, hallelujah. What's going to move me? Hallelujah. Calvary paid the price. Amen. The blood was already shed. Death, hell, and the grave were conquered. Hallelujah. Amen. We got the keys to the kingdom. Why should I be moved? I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. I shall not be moved. Oh, hallelujah. If you don't have a rock in your life, I'm telling you right now, it's going to get rough. Amen. If you don't have a rock in your life, if you don't know God as your rock, hallelujah, if you don't have a salvation that is your foundation, it's going to get rough. But once you see what God can do and what God can be, I'm telling you, he is a rock that you can build your life on. Oh, hallelujah. You can build your life on that. You say, well, Pastor, it's Sunday night, and probably the majority of the people watching, I don't know. Hey, amen. I guess I'm just, I might just be making a guess here, but the majority of the people watching, hey, amen, uh, are church members here, sold out saints of God. But you know why? I need to remind you of something. I need you to remind you of something, that, that things are shaking right now. Things are shaking. And, but you don't need to worry. You say, well, I built, my, I built my whole life on this rock. And I, I remember laying the foundation, and Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. And I remember when I, well, I put the first level on. And I remember when I started to learn, and I started, my family came along, and I started raising my children. 
children in here. You say, Pastor, I've got four or five levels built on this thing already. You know what? Sometimes we can get four or five levels built on a foundation and forget what the foundation is. And things start shaking and we're worried that we got all of this. We're relying. Everything is relying on this foundation. You don't need to worry. You don't need to fret. Hallelujah. You don't need to be scared. Don't even bat an eye. Don't even lose an ounce of sleep. God's got you. Your salvation is your foundation and you shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Somebody say it with me. I shall not be moved. Oh, hallelujah. My God, I wish you'd go out the rest of this next week uh, saying it to yourselves. I shall not be moved. I, I, I wish uh, people around you would say, uh, I wonder what they're talking to themselves about over there. And they come get a little closer and hear you saying, I shall not be moved. Uh, I shall not be moved. You get bad news from work. Uh, I shall not be moved. Uh, you're looking at the finances. Uh, I shall not be moved. Uh, somebody you know, uh, hey man, is uh, going through a tough time uh, or, or somebody brings an attack. I shall not be moved. Uh, hey man, uh, we got to start talking to ourselves a little bit more we got to start encouraging ourselves in the Lord we need to start because we are the example do you hear what I'm saying David was a leader amen he was a leader chosen by God that people had to trust and people had to respect and people had to follow hallelujah in the battle and I'm telling you there's a spiritual battle that is taking place right now in the world and people are looking for a leader somebody to follow and you're an apostolic child of God you're a leader with the name of Jesus tattooed upon your heart and you need to be saying I shall not be moved I shall not be moved I promise you if you'll start declaring it people are going to start lining up behind you where do I need to go what do I need to do what must we do to have what you have I shall not be moved I shall not be moved my God my God you see, you gotta, you, people, are, people are worried. They don't know what they're supposed to trust. You've got to be careful what you trust. Proverbs 20, I mean Psalm 20 and 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But that's not who we are. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, apostolics. That's not who we've ever been. <laughs> I love the fact, amen, I love the fact that apostolics are taking over the to the internet where I love the somebody said today I heard the apostolics broke the internet I don't even know what that means I don't even know what that means some, something happened there was some big shutdown or something but I, I, I love the fact that we're, we're out there I love the fact that we're, we're declaring things I love that that's not always been the case that's not always been the case. I'm going to tell you right now, by the grace of God, and I am abundantly thankful that my entire life, my entire lifetime, it has been relatively easy to be an apostolic in this. Oh, sure, there were times when I was a little bit different. There were times when I had to answer a few tough questions, but oh, that's nothing. That's nothing compared to what generations before us went through. There was a time when everybody thought the apostolics were crazy. There were a time when everybody thought the apostolics were just the, uh, the, the, the nuts on the wrong side of the tracks. There was a time when the revival sweeping across this land and tent revivals were happening all over the place that people would show up for kicks and giggles to just mock and ridicule and throw rotten fruit and tomatoes at people. Amen. And there were times before that that were even worse. And there were times, amen, in the Bible that were even worse than that. But you need to understand something. Oh my God in heaven. Amen. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses but we will remember the name of the Lord our God I ain't going to forget what got me here the apostolics are not going to forget what got us here we are changing the world and we're setting it on fire because of one reason we remember the name of the Lord our God we're not now going to trust in ourselves we're not now going to put our confidence in our own ability but we're going to keep our confidence in Jesus, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Amen. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. You remember when Egypt decided to chase down God's people after the plagues. and Israel leaves and they run into the Red Sea. Pharaoh decides to chase them down. And Exodus 14, 23 through 28. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. And 
and all of Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. They went into the sea, and, and it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of cloud. You might remember that from a lesson that we taught a few weeks ago. And he, and he looked through the cloud, and he troubled the host of the Egyptians. He troubled them. How did he trouble them? He, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. No, notice now, why are they fleeing? Look, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Ha <laughs> ha, we need to get out of here. We have got ourselves in a bad spot. We're out here in the middle of this sea, amen, and our chariots are not working like they're supposed to. The Lord is fighting on their behalf. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again uh, unto the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. I shall not be moved. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. They had their horses uh, and they had their chariots, uh, but something went wrong. Uh, either the, the wheels got stuck in the muck uh, or they fell off altogether. Who knows? Uh, but we know this. Uh, they realized uh, that they were trusting in the wrong thing uh, at the same time that God's people realized uh, that they were trusting in the right Thing. Hallelujah. Some trust in chariots and others trust in horses, but not the people of God. The people of God, we will remember the name of the Lord. We will not forget who our Savior is. Amen. Our salvation, who has become our foundation. I shall not be moved. Oh, hallelujah. I shall not be moved. I'm telling you right now, and I'm I'm done. If you are in God's hands, you are in good hands. <laughs> you hear me? I said if you are in God's hands, you are in good. If you are not in God's hands, you can make a change right now. Right now, where you are, you can cry out to God. You can repent of your sins. You can cast yourself down. You can ask God to forgive you, cleanse you, make you whole. Amen. If you are in God's hands, you are in good hands. And you'll be able to say with confidence and expectation, I shall not be moved. You can say it today about tomorrow. You can say it in sickness and in health. You can say it in good times and say it in bad times. There is a joy. Oh, hallelujah. I feel a joy. I said, I feel a joy. There is a joy that comes uh, with this revelation. I shall not be moved. Uh, not because of me. Uh, not because the people around me. But because the God who's got my back. Uh, the God who's holding me in his hands. Uh, there is a joy that comes with this revelation. There is a confidence that comes with this revelation. You realize your enemy can't destroy you. You realize your God uh, can do anything. And you begin to say it with some attitude. Oh, hallelujah. I shall not be moved. No, no, devil. I shall not be moved. No, no, enemy. I shall not be moved. Sometimes you got to even say it to yourself. I shall not be moved. When you feel a little struggle, when you feel a little trial, when you feel a little temptation, I shall not be moved. My God has got my back and everything's gone. Amen. The more you say it, the more joy you feel. The more you say it, the more excitement you feel. The more you say it, the more you realize everything's going to be all right. I shall not be moved. Oh, lift your hands and magnify the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his holy name together. Amen. Amen. I want us to begin to worship the Lord. We're going to go into a couple of songs of worship right here. And I wish some people with some apostolic confidence would start to declare, I shall not be moved. I wish some believers would start to remember my salvation is also my foundation and everything's going to be all right. I wish some people would start to remember that you're a leader. Hallelujah. You're a leader. And people are looking for 
somebody to believe in and they need to hear somebody that can confidently say I shall not be moved because I remember the name of the Lord I think there ought to be some joy coming to some family rooms right now I think there ought to be some joy coming to some people's hearts right now I think there ought to be some joy begin to come in let's lift up our hands let's magnify the Lord let's exalt the Lord together come on let's worship the Lord come on let's magnify